it is an honor for me to be the 2020 recipient of the John Utes Leadership Award from the National Foundation for Infectious Diseases. Dr. Utes was a legend, both in infectious diseases as well as internal medicine. He was a team builder. He supported young people. He left his landmarks on Georgetown University, on the Medical College of Virginia, and the National Institutes of Health and we have all benefited from his wisdom. His team building has what struck me. There's an old African proverb, and I'm not sure I remember where it came from, but it goes something like this. If you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go with your friends. And I have chosen to go with my friends during my career. So I'd like to use three vignettes to describe what I think are landmarks in my career, but also team events that we've all benefited from. So the first one is the establishment of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases Collaborative Antiviral Study Group. Beginning in the early 1970s with Charles Alford, we began looking at antiviral drugs to treat herpes virus infections. That rapidly grew from 23 institutions to 53 institutions in Sweden, the United Kingdom, and even in South America. And we began studying diseases other than those caused by herpes viruses. But accomplishments along the way have been new drug applications for the treatment of herpes encephalitis, neonatal herpes, congenital cytomegalovirus infections, influenza in young infants, among others. Now this could not have been done without a team of people. And those people included David Kimberlin on the pediatric side of the fence. And today he is leading these studies, continuing them on, I'll be on a smaller scale. John Ganan, who is my internal medicine colleague who helped contribute significantly to our adult studies. And then there was the glue that held the collaborative antiviral study group together, and that is Penny Jester, who was our clinical manager. Two people at the NIH, Walla Dempsey, in particular, helped make sure we negotiated these very difficult waters as time passed by. The second vignette relates to the paradigm of translating basic research into clinical medicine and then taking observations from clinical medicine back to the bench to try and further improve them. And the example I would use is studies that began in 1980 with Bernard Reutzman, a colleague of mine even to this day at the University of Chicago. I had questions that arose from our clinical trials about neurovirulence of herpes simplex virus. He had potential answers to my questions by looking at gene deletions to better understand those functions which allowed this virus to replicate in the central nervous system of animals and humans. Together, we built several program project grants studying neurovirulence. One of those program project grants led to the gene that is responsible for the replication of herpes simplex virus in the central nervous system. When this gene is deleted, the virus will replicate in dividing cells, but not in post mitotic cells. Thus, we had an opportunity to treat brain tumors and other tumors as well. We built another program project to look at the treatment of brain tumors. This consisted of Yancey Gillespie, Jim Marker, and Ralph Wexelbaum, as well as Bernard Reutzman. Together, we did a series of phase 1b studies, now just beginning to show that these viruses have an effect on human disease. Even more importantly, as we move forward, we have folded in one of my pediatric colleagues here at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, Greg Friedman. He has taken our first generation virus into children 
with recurrent glioblastoma, and the results are very striking. They are soon to appear in the New England Journal of Medicine. The third vignette that I would use is the development of antiviral therapies for emerging infections. This is no small task. The infections that we've chosen are chikungunya, dengue, Zika, influenza, and importantly, coronaviruses, particularly SARS-CoV-2. And I would just add that Mark Dennison and Ralph Barrick, through this grant, were able to provide data that allowed first for the IND of remdesivir and subsequently the new drug application approval for remdesivir in the treatment of SARS COVID 19. This has been a wonderful journey. This latter development of new therapies has been spurred on by Mikey Everts and Steph Moore, both of whom I could not do without. I want to pause here because this award is very, very meaningful to me. I could not do it without the support of my family. They have stood beside me for more decades than I can count, and I am truly indebted to them. But I am also indebted to the National Foundation for Infectious Diseases and the recipient of the 2020 John Utes Award. <laughs>